I can't quite contain or explain my evil ways. What's up, everybody? Enderheart here, back with Cypher Secret, and I have not recorded this in such a long time. I've had to reread the story and fix up what the previous videos were because of the copyright strike. I had to take down all of the videos. And that was over about a year ago, so it's perfectly fine. And we are back with episode 25, I'm pretty sure, of Cypher Secret, chapter 20. And as of today, there is 41 chapters. So I hope you all enjoy, and I'm going to be trying my best here. <clears throat> Bill, why are you crying? Dipper didn't know what else to ask or to say other than that. Yes, he had tons of questions flooding around in his head, and he did want answers to them. But the blunt he couldn't put these questions in words. His memories of the past were a blur hovering around as Dipper forced himself to remember what had happened before, and how they ended up like this. Like they were, like they were in a spider's web and their memories tangled together. His breaths were shallow, though faster than usual, as Dipper attempted to stabilize them, even if he did not exactly fail at this task. He felt Bill's grip around him tighten after a few minutes of silence, as if the simplest and weakest wind would blow Dipper away into ashes. The preteen could just hear the bird's wings flapping rhythmically as he, they started singing, announcing the beginning of the new day. The sky was already changing its dark blue color to a light blue one, and Dipper could also hear the animal's footsteps ready to begin the hunt for breakfast, and he hadn't noticed how his hearing had improved since he had almost... Wait, what had really happened? Dipper felt like a piece of his mind was empty. I... I thought... Bill's voice echoed through the clearing and Dipper's skull... And suddenly, the birds, animals, monsters, and all the creatures seemed to stop what they were doing to listen. Dipper could no longer hear the song of the birds, the sense of the unnatural presence of the monsters. Everything was silent for once, as if the world had stopped completely, allowing Dipper to hear his mentor's shaky words and silent whispers. I, I thought I had lost you, too. And there was complete silence. Dipper didn't know what to say, and that there was a main reason he stayed quiet. Though there were many more reasons, he could even make a five-meter-long list with them. The shock, the anger, everything else. The sentiments faded with Bill's words. The word, too, echoed through Dipper's mind and skull. It stayed there, refusing to go away, to leave, attached to Dipper's head like the boy depended on the world, like a drug. What did Bill mean by that? Had he lost someone else? Why did Dipper care so much about this? And Dipper was so entertained with his own thoughts that he could have ignored the whole world around him if it wasn't for one thing tears he felt one fall on his forehead and then another and then another and then it took two seconds to realize these tears were bills his eyes widened upon realizing that bill the all-powerful mighty smart and tricky demon was crying but one question prevailed why was it over him was it over a mere mortal or at least over a half mortal Suddenly, a few memories resurfaced in Dipper's mind, flooding it completely with all the information, every little detail of what had happened last night. A ronde, her revelation, the walk through the forest, the clearing, her betrayal. What were her last words before abandoning him? I'm sorry? Did that mean she actually regretted what she had done? Heck, she, he didn't know. Again, Dipper had so many questions and what wanted the answers to them. He even felt new doubts coming, causing him a new headache. Why did she do that? How could he see her, as she revealed being a ghost? What were those crow-looking creatures, and what were they doing with him? Dipper snapped back to reality when the silence that surrounded them was broken by Bill's next question. Can you walk? Dipper took some time to realize that the dream demon was talking to him. The blint he blinked, thinking about the question. He was sore and weak, but could walk. Or he would try to. Dipper nodded. I... I think so. That was the only answer that had escaped his lips. The rest of his thoughts and words died in his throat. Bill let Dipper's 
on the floor and stood up. Any traits that once indicated that he had been crying were gone. Dipper stood up as well, knowing that he could not waste any more time. As soon as he straightened his back, the preteen felt dizziness take over him, but fought back against the nauseousness feeling of the world spinning around. He took the first few three steps very carefully, adjusting his sight to support the daily light, and then walked over to Bill. Without saying anything else, they headed to the clearing's entrance and only exit. For the first time, Dipper felt himself losing the only things he had ever believed in his life, faith and trust. What do you mean you can't find him? Stan was a nervous wreck, literally. His nephew was missing, and he hadn't noticed it until it was already midnight. He thought the boy would come back. After all, he started acting like he was actually talking to someone, when the truth was that there was no one there. Then, he walked out of the shack so naturally that it was hard for Stan to believe it. The older pines thought he would come back, that he just needed some air and time alone, but he didn't. It was already 8 a.m. He was talking to the cops in front of the mystery shack. Mabel was next to him. Mabel. Poor girl. She was trembling and sobbing in despair. Her brother could have been gone, and, with the news that the younger twin was nowhere to be seen, Mabel was even more desolated. The last thing they had done was argue with each other. Then Dipper Pines, her twin brother, was gone. Stan wanted to comfort Mabel, tell her that everything was fine and that they would find Dipper, but he didn't know what to say. Tears slid down Mabel's cheeks as she kept sobbing, her words barely audible between sobs. I can't lose him because the last thing we did was fight and she kept sobbing this time louder mabel sweetie everything's okay stan started not knowing what to say then we'll find him and i'm sure he's fine stan did not know what who he was trying to convince mabel or himself maybe both maybe not he would never know the cops near him didn't even seem to care about the fact that there was an underage missing boy around there and that it was their responsibility as cops to find him it was their job listen sir we've no you listen to me stan interrupted not wanting the first cop to complete his sentence he was tired of excuses my nephew is somewhere around here he couldn't have simply disappeared out of the country or out of this planet he is somewhere around here and you better find him or Stan stopped upon noticing one pair of eyes watching him from the forest near the shack. The creature had the shape of a human, a preteen human. When it stepped out of the forest, Stan's eyes widened. Mabel followed her great-uncle's gaze until it stopped on the boy who had stepped out of the forest. Dipper! The Brunty screamed at the top of her lungs and ran as fast as her legs allowed her to. When she was near enough, Mabel lunged towards her twin brother and jumped on him. Dipper yelped at the surprise tackle, and they both fell to the ground. Dipper! I, I thought you were gone! Mabel started sobbing again, and then remembered the despair she had felt when her twin was gone. But this time her tears were more happiness that her twin was there, alive and whole. Y yeah, d don't worry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, don't worry. I'm here. He hugged Mabel closely, glad that was all over. But not everything was over yet. I I'm sorry that I worried you, Mabel. I, I shouldn't have left the shack. Dipper looked downcast. The reason why he had left the mystery shack in the first place was a ronde. But what if she was invisible to them? What would he tell them? Dipper knew that his problems were over when he saw Stan walking over to them, and he did not look happy at all. Dipper opened his mouth to say something, but nothing would come out. He had run out of excuses. Where were you? Stan's voice was clear as he wanted answers. Dipper bit his lower lip and lowered his head once more. Mabel sat next to him, watching her brother's eyes carefully. She did not raise her head to look at her great uncle. She kept staring at Dipper, also waiting for an explanation. Of course, Dipper did not answer. Kid, I want an explanation. I called the cops for Pete's sake. Dipper didn't look up. Mabel finally pried her eyes off Dipper to look at Stan. Fine. Don't answer if you don't want to. But I want you to know that you are grounded. Dipper slowly nodded. How did I get myself into this mess? Dipper closed his eyes as he lied on his bed, face first into the pillow. His whole body hurt, especially his back and lungs. He wanted answers, which made him wonder where Bill was. When he was at the exit of the forest, the dream demon had disappeared without a trace, leaving him alone without explaining anything. During the small trip they had through the forest, with, 
With Bill still in his human form, the two did not say a word. Dipper would just watch Bill at the corner of his eye, also watching the bright white wings that were coming from his back. Dipper was so impressed by these wings, which were way bigger than his, that he didn't pay attention to his own road, making him always trip and fall. However, Bill always held him, preventing the boy from falling to the floor, like a guardian angel, or like a father. What really impressed him were those wings. Their purely white coloration and their length was really astonishing. Dipper was hypnotized by how they looked. His wings had two colorations, black for the left, white for the right. He had never actually seen Bill's wings, or as Aronde called, sanctuous allies, or holy wings. He had imagined a demon's wings as black, or something similar. Or did all demons have different wing colorations? Heck, Dipper didn't know, but he wished he did. Bill's wings were gigantic compared to his, and they looked a lot heavier, too. However, they seemed to have less feathers than Dipper's, which led the preteen to ask why his wings were so different. Was it because he was half-demon? Dipper growled in frustration as he adjusted himself on the bed, now facing the ceiling. Why do things have to be so difficult, even when I'm on vacation? The blunt team mused. He grabbed the pillow and pressed it to his face. Then he looked at the clock at his bedside. 9.30 a.m. Dipper groaned in boredom. Dipper wished he hadn't followed and trusted Aronde, because then he wouldn't be in this mess to begin with. Now he was wearing his orange shirt, his gray shorts, and socks. Hat in one hand, journal three in the other. Bored, Dipper decided to open the journal and use the black light that Mabel had lent him. After all, he hadn't finished reading what was written in invisible ink. He put the black light aside as he started to flip through the pages, trying to find where he had stopped. When one small page fell out of the journal, Dipper raised an eyebrow as he opened the journal near his pillow and grabbed the page from the floor. It was completely white, dirty, and smashed. <laughs> Dipper sat on the edge of the bed, grabbed the black light, and used it to illuminate the paper. And then he saw the blurry words, written in invisible ink, written on the smashed page. Creature number 667. Corbos. Bird-looking reapers that take away the vital energy of living creatures. Extremely dangerous. May look like crows, and exceptions are ravens. Never approach them. They are known for attracting little children to isolated places and usually receive orders from lost souls. If one is found, run away. Don't look back. Do not stare in the eye. Weakness unknown. Dipper let the page fall to the floor with wide eyes. Corbos. This is what these filthy creatures were called. Dipper groaned as he sat back on the bed, turning off the black light. Of course, they were supernatural. How could he have seen this? However, these three questions popped out of nowhere. Why did the author use invisible ink to write this? Was it some kind of private information? And why had this page been ripped off? Dipper just wanted answers, and fast. Suddenly, upon realizing that the page that said Corbos received orders from lost souls, his eyes widened. Feed and then discover she is a lost soul. Dipper closed his eyes and relaxed his muscles as he lied on his bed one more time. His right hand on the third journal, the Blunty remembered the page saying that they could look like ravens or crows. Yes, the ones he saw looked like crows, but with a mix of black and white. Also, their weakness were unknown. Did the author find one Corbo in his life? Had he been attacked by one? Had he captured one and analyzed it? Why would he have ripped the page with invisible ink? The Blenty sighed. Dipper wished he wasn't grounded. Why can't life be easy for once? What are they hiding? With that last thought, he fell asleep. Hot. It was so hot in there. Almost like hell itself. What was that smell? It smelled like smoke and burning wood. Dipper opened his eyes in a heartbeat as he stood in his sitting position. His vision was blurry, though slowly adapting to his surroundings. The air had a sickening scent of smoke and metal. No, not metal. It smelled like blood. Fresh blood, nonetheless. Dipper focused on where he was first, a forest, which was being consumed with fire. Half of the trees had been burnt to ashes, which explained the smell of burning wood. Dipper's vision was getting foggy. His lungs were aching with the smoke in the air that there was tears in the corner of his eyes due to a burning sensation in his eyes as well. And finally, Dipper looked around. There was blood on the floor and trees everywhere around him. The preteen's eyes widened upon noticing this. Near his feet, there was a single black feather which was partially covered in blood. 
Dipper slowly stood up, a little dizzy. He grabbed the black feather from the floor and analyzed it closely. He thought about putting it in his vest pocket, but gave up on the idea and simply held onto the feather. Where was he? It looked like the Gravity Falls nearby forest, but it wasn't. It could have been deeper into the forest. But why was it burning? Where did the blood come from? He heard the sound of something between flaming bushes. Without hesitating, Dipper let the feather fall to the floor as he ran away as fast as he couldn't see due to the massive smoke and dust. Because of that, he tripped. Dipper groaned as his body collided with the ground just to notice that he had fallen into a puddle of blood. Yelping, Dipper sat up and looked at the fresh blood under and all over him. And then he looked behind. He had obviously hadn't tripped on something. He had tripped on somebody. He had tripped on a corpse. All the color was immediately drained from Dipper's face as he stared at the corpse in horror. It was a woman, a young one. She had long, gray hair that was messy. Her eyes were wide open, as if she was still alive, at least. Her pupils were gray as well, but in a darker tone. Her mouth, which was hung open, had blood dripping from it. Her limbs were bleeding. One drop of blood slid down her eye, as if she was crying. The woman was definitely dead. Dipper, not having enough strength to stand up and run away anymore, simply crawled away from the corpse. Something was definitely wrong there. He was tired of running. His lungs were being cooked inside his body and ticking. His vision was getting foggy and tired. And then he bumped on something again. Dipper turned back and saw another corpse. It was in the same condition as the woman before, but he had his throat open, revealing bones, muscles, and everything else. Dipper's hand flew to his mouth, trying to prevent the bile rising in his throat. That was so sick. Everything was so sick. Finally, some of the smoke faded, allowing the preteen to have a full view of his surroundings, and what Dipper saw made him wish that the smoke was still around. There were corpses everywhere. There were heads hanging in the trees without a body, and there were bodies missing limbs, and there were limbs without bodies. Dipper closed his eyes to prevent himself from seeing anything else. He was already feeling nauseous. Already giving up, are we? Dipper opened his eyes in a flash and looked around. Not caring about the bodies anymore, or the sickening blood smell invading his nostrils, he was trying to find the owner of the voice, though he knew very well who it was. Ah, seems like I am interrupting something. Dipper wanted to reply, but all that came out was a weak cough. The smoke had already infested the boy's lungs. It felt like they were burning and rotting in the inside of his body. Trying his best not to lose his cool, just as he was about to do, Dipper inhaled a certain amount of air and asked meekly, What happened to them? His voice was hoarse, but loud enough, or at least Dipper thought so. Finally, he heard a snicker coming from within the forest and turned his head in that direction. One pair of golden eyes was watching him intently. Finally, the creature lurking in the shadows grinned, and Dipper had never seen such a pointy, shiny, and sharp teeth before. It sent shivers down his spine. They're all dead, boy. As he heard the answer, Dipper gulped. He wanted to ask one more question that would help him understand things. But he was too scared to let it out. Every time he opened his mouth, nothing came. And that happened for at least one minute until Dipper gathered enough courage to ask once and for all, settling things for him. Y you did this? His voice came louder, but shaky. He was scared, hopeless. Dipper didn't know if that was a nightmare or the harsh reality, but he wanted to believe it was a nightmare, and Dipper hoped that he could make it out alive, at least. You mean, kill them? Oh! I didn't kill these filthy creatures, the creature finally answered, after a long time of silence between them. Its grin widened before the next race came. You did.